book of the Exodus, chapter 4, verse 1. And Moses answered and said, But behold, they, the children of Israel, will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice. For they will say, The Lord hath not appeared unto thee. And the Lord said unto him, What is that in thine hand? And he said, A rod. And he said, Cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent. And Moses fled from it. And the Lord said unto Moses, Put forth thine hand, and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand, and he caught it. And it became a rod in his hand. That they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, hath appeared unto thee. And the Lord said furthermore unto him, Put now thy hand into thy bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom, and when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. And he said, Put thine hand into thy bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom again, and plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. And it shall come to pass, if they, the children of Israel, will not believe thee, neither hearken to the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe also these two signs, neither hearken unto thy voice, that thou shalt take of the water of the river, and pour it upon the dry land, and the water which thou hast taken out of the river shall become blood upon the dry land. And Moses said unto the Lord, that's Jehovah, the Eternal One, O my Lord, or O my Adonai, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore, nor since thou hast first spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. So let's go back to the book of Acts, chapter 7, verse 22. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and deeds. So which one is it? Is he slow of speech or is he mighty in words? Well, remember that Moses is now about 80 years old. He spent the first 40 years of his life as an Egyptian and the last 40 years in Midian. So most commentators think that Moses is stating that he is slow or lacking in the Hebrew tongue, that he is not as fluent as he should be, and possibly even a little rusty with the Egyptian tongue. Exodus 4 verse 11. And the Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth, or who maketh the dumb or deaf, or the seeing or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. And he said, O my Lord, send, I pray thee, by the hand of him whom thou wilt send. Now Moses could only be referring to the prophesied Messiah, the one true Redeemer. Remember, Moses has spent the first 40 years of his life preparing for this day. He was prophesied of by two nations. He was mighty in words and deeds, consistently at the top of his class, a renowned wartime strategist, and a mighty warrior. There was no one. No one more qualified than Moses, and he still didn't feel up to the task. Moses wasn't asking God to send someone less qualified than himself. He was asking for someone more qualified, and that could only be the Messiah. Verse 14, And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses, and he said, Is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well, speak Hebrew well. Don't forget, Aaron lived 80 years with the Egyptians and the Hebrews. And also he cometh forth to meet thee, and when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart. Now Aaron is still a ways off. They don't meet up until verse 27. And thou shalt speak unto him, and put words in his mouth, and I will be with thy mouth and with his mouth, and will teach you what ye shall do. And he shall be thy spokesman unto the people, and he shall be, even he shall be to thee instead of a mouth, and thou shalt be to him instead of God. So God is saying, I'll tell you what to say, and you tell Aaron, and Aaron will translate for the people. Verse 17, And thou shalt take this rod in thy hand, wherewith thou shalt do signs. And Moses went, and returned to Jethro his father-in-law, and said unto him, Let me go, I pray thee, and return unto my brethren, which are in Egypt, and see whether they be yet alive. And Jethro said to Moses, Go in peace. And the Lord said unto Moses in Midian, Go. Return into Egypt, for all the men are dead which sought thy life. And Moses took his wife and his sons. Moses had two sons at this time, Gershom and Eliezer, and set them upon an ass, and he returned to the land of Egypt. And Moses took the rod of God in his hand. And the Lord said unto Moses, 
When thou goest to return into Egypt, see that thou doest all those wonders before Pharaoh, which I have put in thine hand. But I will harden his heart, that he shall not let the people go. So God is telling Moses to expect resistance, that it's part of his plan. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. And I say unto thee, Let my son go, that he may serve me. And if thou refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay thy son, even thy firstborn. And God always makes good on his promise. He is in total control, he knows everything, and he does everything. Verse 24, And it came to pass by the way in the inn, this was probably a small shelter or lean-to erected by a well, that the Lord, or the angel of the Lord, the visible image of the invisible God, met him and sought to kill him. Then Sipporah took a sharp stone, a flint knife, and cut off the foreskin of her son, and cast it at his feet and said, Surely a bloody husband art thou to me. The word cast is the Hebrew word naga. It's the Strong's word H5060. And it means violently to strike, punish, defeat, destroy, beat, bring down, or smite. But it could also mean, and listen closely, to touch, that is to lay the hand upon for any purpose, not just to strike, but any purpose, and euphemistically to lie with the women, by implication to reach out, come near, draw near, join, reach up, touch. Now, there are two different teachings on this verse. Did the Lord seek to kill Moses or to kill the child? Now, the more common teaching is that the Lord sought to kill Moses because he didn't circumcise his youngest son, Eleazar, which on the surface, it would seem so. But I agree with Adam Clark that the Lord sought to kill the uncircumcised child. Let's go to Genesis chapter 17, verse 14. And the uncircumcised man-child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He hath broken my covenant. So the Lord was not seeking to kill Moses. Moses was not to be cut off from the congregation of Israel. He was to lead the congregation out of Egypt, which would also mean that Moses had to be circumcised. Let's go back to verse 1 of this same chapter 17. And when Abram was ninety years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God, that's El Shaddai. Walk before me, and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant, a blood covenant, circumcision, between me and thee, and will multiply thee exceedingly. Skip to verse 7. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee, and their generations, for an everlasting covenant, to be a God unto thee, and to thy seed after thee. Skip to verse 10. This is my covenant, the blood covenant, which you shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised, and ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you. Every man child in your generations, he that is born in the house or bought with money of any stranger which is not of thy seed. Now, let's go back to Exodus 2, verse 2. And the woman conceived and bare a son. This would be Moses. And when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. So we know that Moses was circumcised when he was eight days old. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 17, verse 13. He that is born in thy house and he that is bought with thy money must needs be circumcised. So everyone, no exceptions, and my covenant, the blood covenant, shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And that means forever. And we have already established that the Midianites were of Abraham's seed through his second wife, Keturah. Let's go back to Genesis 25, verse 1. Then again, Abraham took a wife, and her name was Keturah. And she bare him Zimran, and Jokshan, and Medan, and Midian, and Ishbak, and Shua. And the sons of Midian were Ephah and Ephor and Hanak and Abida and Eldaah. These were the children of Keturah. And these Midianites would no doubt continue this blood covenant with the Lord. So were the children of Moses circumcised? We know that he had two children through his wife Zipporah, 
Gershom the eldest, and Eleazar, who was the younger. But the Lord sought to kill only one, which means that the other, most likely the elder son Gershom, had to already be circumcised. And who would have performed this act of circumcision? We really don't know, but we do know that circumcision was a covenant between God and his people, so this would be more of a priestly duty. I believe it was Jethro, the priest of Midian, who would have circumcised Gershom, his grandson, and not Moses, who was raised as an Egyptian. Now, Eleazar was probably still very young when they left for Egypt, so the duty would have fallen upon Moses. But being raised as an Egyptian, and probably too focused on his mission, he really blew it. So desiring to keep the covenant that God had made with her father Abraham, and not wanting her child to die, Zipporah took the matter into her own hand. Let's return to Exodus, verse 26. So he, that's God, let him, the child, go. Then she, that's Zipporah, as she's casting or laying her hand upon the foreskin and drawing near to the Lord, said, A bloody husband thou art, or a husband by blood thou art, because of the circumcision, because of the blood covenant. So Zipporah is really speaking to the Lord, or the angel of the Lord, affirming that she really does desire to keep the covenant God made with her father Abraham. She is saying to the Lord, You are my spouse through this blood covenant. And this shouldn't be surprising. Just like we today are the bride of Christ, or Emmanuel, God with us. And let's go to Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I had made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they broke, although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 54, verse 5. For thy maker is thine husband, the Lord of hosts is his name, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth shall he be called. Back to Exodus, verse 27. And the Lord said to Aaron, Go into the wilderness to meet Moses. Now don't forget, Aaron is at least 83 years old. And he went and met him in the mount of God and kissed him. And Moses told Aaron all the words of the Lord who had sent him, and all the signs which he had commanded him. And Moses and Aaron went and gathered together all the elders of the children of Israel. And Aaron spake, or translated, all the words which the Lord had spoken out to Moses, and did the signs in the sight of the people. And the people, the children of Israel, believed. And when they heard that the Lord had visited the children of Israel, and that he had looked upon their affliction, they bowed their heads and worshipped. 